Hey up lads and lasses, Danfo here, back again with some more Infinite Lagrange, and yeah, let's jump back into it. We are onto the cruises, the Chimera has just been done, so we are over on the Katamara Chaos, because I fancy this one, more so, mostly because I've done like three videos recorded and I need to give my voice a rest. So, this has only got two versions, a little bit quicker and easier for me to do in that sense, but it is also one of the better cruisers in the game. Not so much the railgun type, but the plasma type for certain. The railgun is usable, though. It's not terrible. So, like the IO, this thing gets the ability to have additional propulsion systems, which increases your evasion. You get a flat 15%. You get an additional 8%, um, so an extra 16%, bringing you up to 31%. Uh, quite nicely uh, the propulsion system as well you don't get anything here which is a bit unfortunate uh, and the armor system I think there's I oh, know it got removed I forgot about that it used to have a missile evasion on the armor as well which is actually really quite nice because this thing does sit in the mid row so set in the mid row you are going to go into its additional propulsion system first picking up both of the evasions because this is going to give you 31 percent um evasion going into the armor system after that going double hp here you can ignore the physical resistance a little bit on here but note that you actually only have 30 base armor here uh but you do get a base 10 percent because of it being a jupiter ship so if you really do want you can pick up the extra 10 percent uh energy but my recommendation is to grab the physical resistance giving you 60 armor because that 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 shut down like quite a lot of ships to be honest with you uh ability to like give any damage output uh so 60 armor is quite nice also mitigates like a lot of damage from some of the bigger hitters in the game heavy cannon eris and stuff like that are all pretty you know chunky cannons on them so you do need to sort of uh deal with those a little bit after that, the bow bow mounted railgun system, it has got, unfortunately, the problem that all uh, railguns have, and it is just they, they lack hit rate. So you need to start off by trying to mitigate that as much as possible and picking up both uh, hit rates, the, the flat just hit rate increase and the one against cruisers. This thing is going to try and prioritize cruisers before it goes for any of the smaller ships. That being said... If the front row is only HC, uh, Eris and Taurus, it is just going to try and plow through those first. But as you can see, with 1200 damage per hit, it doesn't have to hit too many shots to really deal some damage. Uh, but it does need to hit those shots. So double hit rate, double cooldown is the way to go on this, and double damage. The damage on this, the damage increases, if you think about it, is 120 extra damage for each of those modules plus you know an extra 60 from five percent it brings you up to like this really ni nice bit where you are just loads and loads of damage concentrate fire periodically is in my opinion the worst strategy in the game and uh, shouldn't be run and i would just flat out ignore this i'd rather consistency of just going flat damage increases and the cooldown after the bow railgun system, the anti-aircraft system is it's, it's okay on here. It's Thankfully, it's a missile launcher, so it's accurate. Uh, but the problem is, as you can see, we've got no way to give it, you know, row wide or anything of that nature. And it's only on counter-attack, which is a bit of a shame because it, it'd probably be an all right system if it added a bit of row wide in there. Uh, that being said, hit rate. Double hit rate, uh, you have five slots. Double hit rate, double cooldown, and lock-on efficiency uh, will help a little bit mitigate, well, not mitigate, but deal some damage to uh, But again, it's only going to take damage from uh, when it's being attacked itself. After that, uh, over to the propulsion system, where I would personally pick up double warp speed, cruising speed, but this is actually quite a fast ship uh, anyway. Which is quite nice. Oh no, it's not. 450. I swear this used to be quicker. I swear they keep doing like little hidden patches that they don't tell anybody about. And they, they just like... Because I swear this used to be around 550, 600. Um, anyway. So, double warp speed, cruise speed is my choice. But you can go double cruising speed, warp speed. Um, and yeah. Now, over onto the plasma type. Um... 
Yeah, now this is where it gets really, really interesting because the plasma moves to the back row, but you keep the additional proportion, so you can still get 31% evasion, which is really, really good for tanking in the back row. You do lose the ability to go up you know, too much on the uh, HP and stuff. You lose a module slot here, but double HP and uh, one of the physical resistances, how I'd start this by then going into the evasion and grabbing the double evasion before moving over to possibly one of the best weapon systems in the game. It's the plasma caster. Now it's 1200 damage per hit. The damage type is energy and the most energy resistance you can get on most ships is 20 percent which means this thing is just going to chunk over and over and over and over again whereas you know with armor systems you can easily mitigate a lot of the armor damage uh like quite a bit of the armor damage especially when you're getting up to the cruiser tiers you saw chimeras earlier of like base 80 armor um ios and stuff have really good hit rates Plasmas, though, unlike its laser counterpart, have really good hit rates, like just base and inbuilt. So hit rate increasing uh, just exacerbates its ability to hit more and more and more. And they also still get the benefits of being an energy type weapon. So they get firing duration in, uh, decreases, which are amazing. These like ramp up DPS uh, like so much is absurd, to be honest with you. There's two of them as well, because why Why not? 1,200 damage per hit times two, because, you know, because you can, right? 10 second cooldown, six second lock on time. As you can see, the duration is quite high here, but you have got the ability for firing duration reduction and uh, double hit rate. Probably double hit rate, firing duration, and double cooldown is the way to go. It leaves you with one uh one choice here and it's either going to overdrive turns off all the weapon systems increase the damage frequency by four increase the continuous firing duration of the main ion or plasma cannon by 100 percent increases the hit rate by 35 percent every 90 seconds for 30 seconds with a 15 second cool on cool down this is actually when the strategy becomes worth picking up over the weapon damage however there is also the option of dropping the cooldown on this and going double damage and then picking overdrive. And then when that overdrive kicks in, the damage output this thing can deal is disgusting because of the damaging frequency increase and then the firing duration increase with the firing duration decrease. It it's it's just nasty. That is my recommended for this. Is double hit rate. Firing duration decrease, uh, double damage, and finish with the overdrive. If you want a more uh, consistent damage output variant, double um, hit rate, uh, one of the firing durations, double cooldown, and one of the damages will be the better, uh, more consistent damage output. But when that overdrive triggers and you are running double uh, plasma capacity and the uh, generation for the extra 10%, so each shot is hitting uh, 1,460, I think it is, or 1,440. And then you get an extra 5%, so there's another 60. So you're hitting over 1,500 per hit now with the overdrive upgrade as well. Uh, I believe it decreases the, the cooldown like every 90 seconds. I believe that goes down to 75 or something. Uh, or is it the one that increases the hit rate and stuff? I can't remember. Uh, it's the same on the IO, I believe. It's, it is devastating when this thing starts like chucking out damage and you start seeing it. You you look at some battle reports with people who have maxed out plasma and they run that overdrive system on it with the double uh, damage. It's so much damage output. It really is. And it's back row with evasion and you know a relatively decent health pool and stuff. It takes a long time to take out, even like Corvettes and stuff shooting at it. It's dodging shots. It's, you know, it's it's re it's really good. It just is. Um, obviously, just mentioned, you know, it's back row, so it will be getting attacked by um, 
corvettes and stuff double hit rate double cooldown and one of the damage systems or uh the lock on efficiency lock on efficiency is probably slightly better here uh giving you a little bit better lock on efficiency does actually help and that'll help for the the counter attack uh, coming in so that would be my recommendation for the plasma type obviously uh you've also got the props but the the props here for me are always double warp speed cruising speed but you can go double cruising speed warp speed choice is yours um yeah plasma i ran this until i got callisto b and it's not it's not as high damage as callisto type b granted but it's not far off it really isn't far off and when Callisto B has like nothing to tank for it, Callisto B's drop really, really fast. This, on the other hand, is able to stick around a little bit uh, because it has, you know, inbuilt evasion and stuff like that. It, it, it just works. It's kind of like a back row IO. Um, and it is because it is a back row IO, it will consistently uh, deal more damage than the IO can. Um, not so much the IO type B against Frigus Destroyers, but definitely the base IO against Cruisers. This, generally speaking, will out damage the base IO uh, and survive most of the time, where the IOs usually die at some point. So, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.